Hey guys, it's Carl. Laptop review time and we just got back from MWC. This is the one that I carried with me. This is the Huawei MateBook 14S. Technically came out officially at the end of last year and unofficially came out for Canada just the other day, but I've been using this for the past, I'd say two months as my daily laptop. And the reason why I took this with me is for the form factor. So 14S, it's got a 14 inch display. And I do love the fact that it is small, relatively compact. I know that there are smaller 14 inch laptops, but for the pack that I actually brought with me, this fit in perfectly. So if you happen to check out my tech travel pack, the DB Journey is the one that I carried with me and it slots perfectly into the back. And for the first time in two and a half years, I crossed the pond, I was over in Europe. And when you're traveling, you don't really remember how essential having compact tech is. We've all become used to using larger laptops. I have my 16 inch MacBook Pro behind me in the studio. It isn't the greatest for traveling. And when you are back on the road, I think things are trying to open up, be a bit more back to normal. Just having something a bit more small, compact makes the biggest difference. That's where the 14S kind of slots in. And we'll start off with the design first because I've always been a fan of Huawei's builds. It's one piece of aluminum, so a unibody design. Once again, very similar to the MacBook line, which I think is kind of industry standard. It's built well, machine finished, and it actually has a very similar naming mechanism, Space Gray, which we've also heard of. And it also comes in spruce green, hence the green theme for this video. 997, on a mountain background. Bulbasaur, green controller. Team Green, best starting Pokemon. <laughs> like I mentioned, it's technically not the smallest or slimmest 14 inch, but they don't really sacrifice in terms of IO or screen, which we'll get to. So you do still have two USB-C ports, a standard HDMI headphone jack on one side and a good old USB-A, which I think is still vital, even though this is an archaic port we still need things to connect to it. And for the display, it does get slightly larger because it's a three by two aspect ratio. So great for productivity. And I think that's what this laptop is really tuned for. And at MWC, it was kind of the perfect combo of size and power. So just updating a ton of social, bringing you guys the latest in tech. I wasn't necessarily hardcore video editing. I was doing a couple things on reels, just updating social. So I was just sticking to 1080p video. So light usage on Premiere worked fine and a lot of just standard photo editing over on Lightroom was fine. Just the standard productivity stuff that I think most people do day to day. And my days at MWC were generally long ones. So just beginning the day off at the showroom floor, kind of exploring, checking out all the different tech brands. And then that evolved to usually corresponding with those brands, hammering out emails, hammering out deals, and then doing photography tours, taking all the photo and video that I shot, bringing them onto here, doing some quick edits and posting them on social. My days usually end around midnight. I wouldn't say that I had the computer on the entire day, but I was averaging around eight to nine hours of full day usage and I didn't even have to bring the charging brick with me. Obviously getting into more battery intensive tasks, heavier GPU usage like that video editing, you would need to charge it up quicker. But if you're looking for a device for the entire kind of working day, you can get by in a single charge. So spec wise, you can get this in a couple different variants, either an i5 or i7, either eight or 16 gigs and either 512 or a terabyte SSD. So technically as of right now, this is running an older processor because we have the new Alder Lake processors coming out in the next couple months. So either snag it right now to still take full advantage, or if you can wait a couple months, I'm sure this will kind of come down in price. And in terms of price, it really depends which region and what spec is available to you. So for Canada, you can only choose the one option. So that starts at 1898.99. There's a bunch of different retailers that you can grab it at. I will leave links down below and that's around 1500 USD. Some other things that I've really noticed and loved about it is the keyboard, even though I mentioned emails, the bane of the existence. 1.5 mil travel on the keyboard. It's nice and evenly spaced out. It feels great to type on, even typing those emails out for a couple hours. It's just been a great typing experience and it is backlit. You've got a decent sized trackpad on it, which has some good clickiness.
on and off button on the top right, which also serves as a fingerprint sensor. And I've seen Huawei laptops before that have had the camera on the bottom. Thankfully, they have included it up top, 720p, so just decent enough to do all of your Zoom or team meetings with. One thing that I was actually pleasantly surprised with was the speaker setup. So you've got a quad speaker system here. They're just on the bottom and for just general music playback and video content, they do sound great. It also has a four mic array and they're just actually right at the bottom here. Let me stop my Zelda music <laughs> right underneath the trackpad here. So just being able to pick up your voice for those Zoom calls or team meetings, it should be fine. And I did forget to mention, this is their first laptop that does have Huawei sound built in. And mentioning that Huawei name. So if you happen to be in the Huawei ecosystem, it is using App Gallery and it is running Harmony OS 2.0. So if you have a Huawei device, I know that they haven't come to say Canada in the past year, but the rest of the world, I know that they just dropped their P40 devices. If you have that one of their tablets, you can use it as a second display. I know that their app ecosystem technically isn't perfect yet. They're still working on it. But uh, if anything, what I did see at MWC, they are, still kicking, they are still producing some really decent hardware if you just kind of give it a chance. I know that Huawei is still being pretty innovative. They're releasing a couple new product lines. So they just got into the PC space in terms of monitors. So I did a previous vid on their Huawei Mate View GT. They also have some pretty cool accessories. So if you want, you can pair it with this laptop. I know this is technically a gaming mouse and they have this really cool charging mat, this little wireless charging mat for that mouse. This technically is not a gaming laptop. You can't really run AAA titles at 60 frames, but if you're willing to drop those frames back or just drop to a lower graphic setting and you can pair your gaming experience with the 90 Hertz display and you can toggle the refresh rate by pressing function R to switch between either 90 or 60, depending on what you're doing on the computer. But anyways, that's kind of my review of the Huawei MateBook 14S served me perfectly at MWC. And like I said, it's a pretty decent productivity laptop for traveling, for being on the go. And hopefully depending where you are in the world, stuff is opening back up again. And hopefully we can all just start traveling and the world can go back to normal because we've all been stuck inside our houses for the past two and a half years. Hope you guys enjoyed this vid and I will try to convince Huawei to give some of this stuff away, maybe some of their cool gaming accessories. So just leave a comment down below, make sure you're subbed to the channel and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.